My Sterling single, part 40. Removing the new paint from the wheel treads, removing the old paint from the axle boxes, polishing them and looking at the springs. This clip shows one of the wheel sets fitted in the chuck of my Myford lathe, with the other end supported by a dead centre in the tailstock chuck. Why am I using a dead centre and not a live centre that revolves in a bearing? Well, I've lost that. I haven't yet found it. This is not a big problem. A spot of oil to lubricate the dead centre holds the outer part of the axle perfectly. To remove the paint from the treads, I'm using some coarse emery cloth. I've folded the piece of emery cloth into three and I have to refold the emery cloth frequently because there's a lot of paint on the wheel treads which clogs up the sandpaper. Very soon I cleaned all of the wheel treads, then I noticed a blemish in the paint on one of the wheels. And while it was still in the lathe, I cleaned up the front face of the wheel using some wet or dry sandpaper and gave it another quick coat of Great Northern Railway Green. The day after when the paint had dried, I put the wheel set back into the chuck, exactly as I've previously shown, and cleaned up the wheel tread. And now the three tender wheel sets all look like new. The next part of the job is to clean up the axle boxes, and to do this, as usual, I'm going to use cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner. In this clip, I'm putting the axle boxes in a small polythene box. It has to be polythene. You must not use an ordinary polystyrene plastic box because the cellulose thinners will dissolve it. Once I've put all of the axle boxes in the polythene box, this clip shows me filling the box with the cellulose thinners to dissolve the paint. I receive a few messages from viewers saying, why do I always use cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner? I do that because it dissolves the paint without any help really. If I just leave these axle boxes in the liquid and come back the next day, most of the paint will be very loose or in the bottom of the plastic box. Because cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner gives off a very powerful, what you could call, fragrance, I took the box and put it in the outer part of the workshop. Once I cleaned up the first axle box, have a look at this. Normally when you make axle boxes, the hole for the axle is in the centre, but that is not the case with these axle boxes. As you can clearly see, the hole for the axle is near the bottom and the original hole in the centre of the axle box has been plugged with a piece of brass bar, soft soldered in. I didn't wait long enough for the paint to fall off in this episode, I wanted to get on with the job, and in this clip I'm removing the paint with some help from my toothbrush. The cellulose thinners have dissolved most of it anyway. Two health and safety warnings, you're not supposed to put your fingers in cellulose thinners, and I'm trying not to. And the second warning is, this operation is taking place right next to a wide open door in the outer part of my workshop. Back on the bench in the inner workshop, using my battery powered Proxon motor tool and a wire brush, I'm removing the rest of the paint. Another health and safety warning, when you do this job you must wear eye protection. And also, keep the speed of the Proxon motor tool down, it doesn't need to go all that fast. If it goes too fast, then a lot of the bristles fly off. Often the bristles stick in any clothing that you're wearing, like a t-shirt or in my case often a fleecy jacket. And it's really annoying because the bristles are stuck through the material of my jacket and for a couple of days I will keep feeling them pricking my skin. The bristles on these wire brushes are made from stainless steel, which is a pity really because if they were made from mild steel I could try using a powerful magnet to remove the fragments of bristles from my jacket. The gunmetal axle boxes with the soft soldered brass part on the front look quite nice unpainted, so I'll have to make a decision whether I want to paint these. With the sterling single, I haven't yet decided what I'm going to do with the paint, I'm sort of experimenting. The frames were originally painted with LMS red paint and I've got rid of that both the frames on the engine and the tender are now painted with Great Northern Railway chocolate brown. After giving these axle boxes a thorough clean with the wire brush, I then cleaned up the top face, that's the part that's soldered on, using a piece of 400 grit wet to dry sandpaper. This soon became a very tedious job, but eventually the front parts of the axle boxes looked a little better. I'd got rid of most of the scratches. 
Maybe I should polish up the shaped parts on the front and then paint around the edge of them with black paint. I don't know yet. I'll see what they look like when I remount them in the tender frames. I would like to fit some better springs to the axle boxes because the ones that are fitted are too weak. This particular spring that is sat in one of the axle boxes is made of a thicker gauge of wire and is much stronger than the original springs that were fitted. The main problem was the tender, even without any water in it, sat too low relative to the height of the locomotive. These springs are 7 seconds of an inch in diameter, but as I've just said, they're much heavier duty than the springs that were originally fitted. The footplate of the tender needs to be at the same level as the footplate of the locomotive. I did find a really good tip many years ago when I had a Midland Spinner single wheeler. When I used the tender to apply some pressure to the back of the engine, which in turn applied more pressure to the single wheel down onto the track. This improved the adhesion of the locomotive to the track considerably. When I put the tender back together, I will look at doing exactly the same with this Sterling single. More about that in another episode. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.